We'll be good. It's great. We'll start now. Okay. So awesome. We're here with Mr. Crosby, Evergreen School District. You prefer Charles? Sure. Okay. Awesome. And uh, just wanted you guys to, to get to know him. He's the new. So when did, did you guys actually put in a director uh, of communications? Well, it's not so new now. It's It's been over three years. Mm. Uh, it was new then, uh, but uh, now we're pretty firmly established. Wonderful. Wonderful. And a, a little background about yourself before we start. We were chatting uh, right before. For all my Canadian friends watching out there, you're from not uh, Nova Scotia. Nova Scotia. Yep. Is that far? Educate me on that. Is that far east? Uh, east coast. It's uh, we're close to Maine. Okay, yep. so that's the only place I've been is either Va Vancouver or Montreal. Yep. Uh, we get that amazing, a lot. Yep. Yeah, amazing place. Yep. This is above Mon Montreal. Uh, east of Montreal. East of Montreal. Yep. Okay, wonderful. So let's talk uh, value. Let's talk what those parents and mothers uh, uh, might be uh, thinking. Uh, first off, I just posted the video again on uh, Finland. Um, has that come up uh, at all? And, and for background on that, uh, people have been studying Finland, the fact they eliminated uh, homework, they increased recess, and they saw a dramatic change in, in test, score, uh, you know, test scores and so forth. Um, so the whole point of this um, is to educate, educate, educate on those uh, thoughts of that. Um, has there been brought up at all. Um, I know it's kind of out of your hands, besides from Superintendent uh, Mrs. Gomez, there's the, the Board of Trustees, correct? Yeah, so that's something that's that they talk about. Yeah, I mean, you're talking about fundamental policy issues, which um, the policy is dictated by, by the Board of Trustees, ultimately. Mm -hmm. um, we will study certain things and make recommendations, but uh, when it comes to issues like this, it's there's not an easy answer, especially given how much history we have in, in this country mm -hmm. um, when it comes to education. Uh, things like homework, there's a, there's a lot of research out there that shows um, what European countries are doing. Uh, it works for them. Mm -hmm. uh, there are others, and we've actually heard this come up at some of our community meetings where the topic of homework comes up, and it'll get really heated. We'll have mm -hmm. different parents with very different perspectives. And I was uh, leading a parents' advisory committee meeting one day, and we had a parent talking about homework and saying how she felt that there should be more of it, mm -hmm. uh, that her kids weren't getting enough, that mm -hmm. she felt very important, that she said it was culturally important to her, mm -hmm. uh, that there be... Especially you know, in Asian cultures like myself. Absolutely, absolutely. Yes. They feel that uh, what they put in is what they get exactly. out, so they got to... Which is why it's so important, because it's like, you got to almost stop talking and just put on the video in front of them, because it blows you yeah, away. Yeah, it, 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 it's quite compelling, but... On the other side, we actually know the parent who uh, who was advocating the opposite from the same community, interestingly, uh, uh, and she was saying she didn't feel there's enough balance, and that she wanted more attention paid on artistic pursuits and music, and and downtime and less on homework and less mm -hmm. uh, less constantly going down that same path with that intensity, mm -hmm. and so what that illustrates is that that there's no one easy path and one because, size fits all solution exactly yeah. exactly we have uh, different uh, very, very disparate communities uh, in Evergreen. And um, it's a tough job for you guys. Yeah, How do you yeah. find that middle and to please everybody? Uh, my advice to that uh, Asian parent would be, okay, how do you change their perception? And that's why shows like this, Mr. Rosby, is so important because when you see something, that's the only way on your own you can go, huh, hmm. all right, and sure. change some type of perception. And, and uh, that's why I felt it was so important. But I'm sure anybody who watched that video, was, I would have never thought that doesn't make sense. I'm sure that gets tougher when you go into the high school age of – college because right that's the yeah, toughest and that's, part that's a big part of why that, like when, when you hear the discussion it tends to be how are we preparing kids for for high school and then for college mm -hmm. and um, again there's no easy answer to that because you one could say that you're preparing them best by uh, giving them a holistic uh, education and not just focusing on one aspect of it or one kind of education mm -hmm. and there's others who say if you don't uh, assign pretty heavy homework mm -hmm. and get them used to that, mm -hmm. uh, then they're going to find themselves at a disadvantage when they get to high school and even more so when they get into college where it's very independent study based. Right. And so again, there's not an easy answer to that. Culturally, a place like Finland uh, or Denmark where you're seeing it to a degree, uh, Germany where you're seeing it to a degree, uh, the reason they're able to go that path is because they're not going from quite... A, as an extreme as it would be to make that change culturally mm -hmm, here. Mm -hmm, uh, that said, they're not as large either. Th that, they don't have a, yeah. as many democratic yeah. uh, processes to be that open. Exactly, right? exactly. So uh, th there's no easy answer to it. I think it's a really intriguing question. Uh, I watched that film that you mentioned with my son, who yes. uh, 
Um, and he's he's very passionate about this. He's a middle mm. schooler, and he of course, uh, if you're their age, um, you're like, what? No well, homework? Well, it, I'm all in. Well, I like this but, guy. But interestingly, it's not, like, but there's a, there's he, a science he, to it. He's a kid who um, he says I would rather do extra time at school mm. and get it done in class, like make the classes longer and make it about interactive classwork mm. uh, and not work at home. Mm. And there, that's hands the, on learning. Yeah. Uh, yeah, no, I absolutely agree. Kind Philosophically, of it's an interesting way to go for a 14-year-old kid. And, no, I, uh, I've read. I'll put up this pyramid that, you know, uh, studies have proven that reading was actually one of the worst ways to comprehend information. Yeah. Then it was uh, writing. I want to say Palo. I, I don't, I don't want to be wrong. But basically, the top of the charts, uh, aside from hands-on, yeah. was simulation. Yeah. Actually, you can say video games, but, for example, a pilot, when he's not flying a plane, he's has a pilot simulator yeah. Yeah. so that's been proven to be the quickest way uh video is uh, you know above pictures uh and so forth yes, right. the reading was the wrong way and i guess the fear is it makes parents feel good because maybe they want more daycare away from their jobs <laughs> of more because I, I i think about both sides all the time yeah. so one of the other answers was to decrease time at school and increase recess well realistically in this world you decrease time at school that means the parents have to come and pick them up quicker which to them True. they're like yeah. In the back of their mind, they're going to object to this because they're like, wait, I got to, that's, that's, I'm going to have to find daycare now. And, and that's the thing. There are practical concerns no matter what you do. And, and a great example, one of our middle schools changed their start time this mm. year. And in fact, there's a movement statewide. It's already passed the legislature. It's in committee right now mm. to mandate that schools not start before a certain time because they feel it's not fair to, um, to kids to get them into the school process so early in the morning when there's tons of science that shows that mm. kids need more sleep than they're getting. Mm -hmm. um, they they need uh, less of a of a jarring uh, start to their day, Stress. and so and there's a lot of research that backs that up. 100%. And so um, partly in anticipation of that, one of our middle schools, which had a pretty early start time, shifted it forward uh, by I think about 45 minutes this year. Mm. Uh, some of the the feedback to that, most of it was very positive, mm -hmm. uh, but we had a lot of very passionate parents who said this really. Uh, uh, played havoc with their schedule, with mm -hmm. their drop-offs. If they had a, a child at another school, that they were able to stagger drop-offs previously. Now that it was hard to do that. See, people are worried right. about that awkwardness, that debate, yeah. that stress. But you got to be transparent. You got to ha have these conversations openly. When those parents get emotional because it's their kids, it's important to remember that this is for the whole. And K to six, Mr. Crosby, this is the most rapidly developing time of their brain. Absolutely. Is, I think it's for that reason, this case study with Finland is. Much much more important for them where it's okay for them to have recess to have exercise i mean uh, childhood obesity is a, is yeah. epidemic here yep. in our country that would be one way to uh, target that i'm so happy we did this man <laughs> this is what i gotta tell you a quick story I, i'm the meanest guy in the world i'm the nicest guy in the world too but I, I i was doing whatever i could to get in this this door and i probably didn't go by the right way uh but i i, I was straight up send, sending emails just angry just guys we got to do this because this is so important and avenues i follow, follow the evergreen san jose facebook group and i see moms posting questions to to other people that are in relation to this and we tried to chime in um, you may not know the answer to the question but let's say if a mom wants to know hey this lady tells telling me I'm not in this attendance zone when I'm in this attendance zone borderline like controversial uh, topic uh, what is the the normal blueprint way for them to go about that they could probably go to evergreen my advice off the top of my head was well you we can probably go to evergreen school district's website not the mm -hmm. school itself's yeah, website the side, yeah. uh, and find out if you your residential mm -hmm. falls into that yeah so did I somewhat answer that correctly? yeah I mean generally speaking when you have a question uh, about uh, something that that doesn't seem obvious to uh, the school itself or to a specific site. Uh, that's why we're here. That's why they might here. they may not know a district exists, right? Right. Well, we yeah. often get that. In fact, we've yeah. done some things this year to kind of break down those barriers a little bit and make people aware that that we're here. Uh, we do a weekly uh, email uh, to all of our parents Wonderful. that comes from the district. And we've done it in such a way that we've stripped away any uh, what we call it, edge jargon. So there's there's you know, it's very uh, stripped down. Where can they sign up for that? Go, go to the website, um, well, it's 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 for parents because it's it's done through it's done through our our parent portal system. Got so it, anyone it. who registers th through the system, uh, they'll automatically get uh, correspondence from us. I could and just in the last couple of years, we've started using that more to actually reach out directly to parents. 
because the relationship our families have is with their school and even more so with the teacher. Mm. And so what we're trying to, to, to show them is that we are a broader community. Your school is vitally important. Your teacher is vitally important. But um, there's there's more to the community than just that school and or just that teacher. And so what we've put a real premium on is communicating more with uh, with all of our parents. And, is this the and, peach jar? What's the peach uh, jar? Peach jar is uh, a way that we distribute uh, flyers. And cool. we're finding a lot, of, a lot of flyers just don't go home because kids, and I know this personally as a parent, uh, kids don't bring stuff home. And, uh, so we've gone all digital. And up in a bush somewhere on the walk home. Yeah, yeah absolutely. And, that's, and we, I see that when I walk around the community. And yeah. um, so, and we knew that was happening. So what Peach Jar does is it digitizes that process. Mm -hmm. So every flyer is digital, can be accessed by parents themselves if they're in the system. Um, which they have to be because they're they're going to sign. They're going to watch check grades and whatnot. Right, and so, right, right, right. So as part of that, they can sign up for Peach Jar and they get flyers directly. They'll get updates uh, pertaining to their school, but there's also stuff that's not specific to a school, but district wide. That brings me to my next question. Yeah. Another thing I asked my wife and other moms before I came to talk to you was, besides test scores, we'll get to that. They said, uh, well, I'd want to know about after school programs. Yep. That would get so Peach Jar would be one way because those flyers. Would, would come up absolutely right? and and there's ways that we can support that district wide that tends to be more school specific uh, because every program is different at every mm. different school and we, we often have programs that are specifically set up with that school in mind or that that school's communities needs in mind. How, how many school, schools have we got uh, just just it, talking elementary because well, you guys are charging middle too yeah right? there's there's 18 schools in total not including our two schools within a school um, mm. three of our schools are middle schools uh, so that's 15 elementaries so we got Quimby, Shavuot, Leva. yeah and, and, then, and then 15 elementary schools as well okay uh, and then there's the, we've got uh, our new LSI which is part of Quimby and uh, Bulldog Tech which is it's, part of Leva. Let's talk about that real quick. Yeah. Um, I brought that up. So Evergreen School Districts here is right next to Quimby Oak Middle School. I'm a Lobo too, so lots of pride in that. Uh, as I walk in the parking lot, I see, whoa, lots of big things going yep. on. I was in the tech industry. I was in Salt State Drives. A lot of Canadian tech reviewers mm -hmm. that I worked with, uh, they're the big techies. Um, but when I heard, we heard the word um, LSI, are we talking the same LSI that used to be Sandforce? Uh, you probably, no, that's a, no, a nerdy this question. Is, this, is the, this is the Lobo School of Innovation. Oh, that's and, the acronym. Got it. And so, this one was like, yes, LSI. For, for those who are familiar with Bulldog, it's uh, at, at Leva. It's a very similar model. It's a new tech uh, network school. Okay. And uh, it's just a different approach to learning. Um, and I, I won't get the particulars of it, but I do encourage folks to actually look uh, at our website and and uh, explore from. But the goal is advancing technology at a young age for these kids. There, there's a major tech component to it. Uh, it's a different approach to learning than you might get mm. from a traditional um, school. And this goes to what we were talking about before, about right. the, the transitioning from some things that we've always done but may or may not work uh, in the best interests of a student. Mm. And so instead of saying, well, we're, we're shifting over and everyone's now going to do this other thing, we're providing more options. And so if there are folks who who want to try something different for their family or for their kid, mm. uh, they can explore at the middle school level uh, options like LSI or Bulldog if they are um, still more uh, in line with a so-called traditional education then mm -hmm. there's still options for them as well and mm -hmm. so I think it's important at this point that we provide choices and I can't get into too many details about it sure, now, sure. but you're going to still see, developing. you're going to see over the next year or so more choices uh, on the table uh, more options schools that uh, specialize in something uh, as opposed to just simply being a, a catch-all Mm -hmm. um, and so again, I, I, and I, these will, I mean, as far as Quimby is concerned, these yeah. will be basically computer labs. Well, um, it's, it's more than, again, it's that more about an approach to learning. Although we are seeing things like steam labs coming into more of our schools. Um, our goal is to have, actually, I'm not sure what the exact number is, but sure. we've had, there were two to kick it off at Silver Oak and Evergreen, mm -hmm. and there's several more in various stages of development now. Uh, so again, it's providing more options. So it's not just about computer labs or even computers, but it's about more hands-on learning. Uh, it's about um, uh, project-based learning. Uh, there's going to be different, and again, I, I wish I could talk more about some of the specifics we're going to see in the still next developing. year or two, but there's a few things still in development that we're looking at. Uh, if you come to board meetings, you'll be here at this discussed, actually, because uh, this is a passion of many of our board members. Great. Uh, but there are a couple of things that we're looking to implement at some of our schools 
going forward that will again provide more options, more choices, so that uh, folks can get a more uh, specified education that's in line with their family's needs. And and uh, when are, are those? There's two separate things. There's a parent committee meeting that's held the first Wednesday of every month, 9.30 to 10.30. That's for Evergreen School District. Yeah. And then there's the one you just spoke of. Where, where well, the, the parents advisory committee is the one the Wednesday um, held, um, I, I think it's the first Wednesday of every month, starting October 1st. And that's for any parent in the district that wants to come out and um, we'll, we'll pick topics the first meeting. It's completely parent generated. So mm. they choose the topics for the year. Oh, wonderful. They can uh, put those in before the meeting? They can before the meeting or at the first meeting. Uh, we use okay. the first meeting mostly to get reacquainted and to talk about what's on folks' minds. So there are a lot of ideas that, that we pursued that came from that process that I wouldn't have necessarily brought forward. But they um, one year they wanted to talk to someone from uh, SJPD to come in and talk about safety issues and traffic. Um, other times that, that they takes want, me to my, my, my yeah. next topic. I didn't yeah. mean to cut you off. So yeah. I apologize. I know you're tied on time too. Yeah. Is bullying because I feel bullying is is a much bigger topic at this age, this tender age of uh, we've all uh, been there versus high school. It exists everywhere, but I feel that. Naturally, kids are so inclined to bully. We remember that we almost feel it's normal. Even, even when we're looking at the other gender, right? This is the age when sure. we like somebody. The way we show that we like them is to bully and not even know that we're being hurtful or even traumatic to them uh, at that young age. And this was another thing that I asked about four moms that came up uh, with them of what kind of you know what kind of ways are we putting in so number one one way could be that if a parent wanted to hear that topic brought up more we can talk about that but yes. are there any implementations or programs in place yet to well yeah I mean, we have a pretty um, extensive um, bullying awareness um, uh, initiative uh, our people services department uh, they take this extremely seriously this is uh, the safety of our kids is our number one priority right and that includes issues like bullying so mm -hmm. uh, and again it's a complex topic but yeah uh, it's one that we have uh, there's any anti-bullying initiatives, there's um, a, a, an effort to make sure that our students know that our teachers and other staff are approachable and, and can, are there for them to support them if they Pretty feel sad. like they're in, a, in a, either a bullying situation or any kind of uh, unsafe, perceived unsafe uh, place. So, and the crazy part of this age is it's not even the physical. I was never physically bullied, yeah. but I feel like what's 10 times more traumatic is actually the verbal, they, you know, they say sticks and sure. stones. Sure, it's all really. The words will never hurt me, but let's be honest. We all remember it, and especially at that such of a, a confused age, I look back to sixth grade and seventh grade and just going to Raging Waters and somebody saying one thing and how overly dramatic and self-conscious sure. I was sure. in my mind when looking back, obviously, with time we learned it wasn't that big of a deal, yeah. you know? I mean, uh, but but that's why those things are so important. Yeah, it, it, again, uh, safety it comes in many forms, and it's not just about uh, being safe from, from physical harm, but emotional harm mm -hmm. uh, and psychological harm, mm -hmm. and so it's, it's our job as people who work uh, with these kids to make sure that they have as safe an environment as possible. And mm -hmm. so you have to provide them those safeguards. And that is one of our, our top priorities, and it's where we put a lot of our resources because it matters. Okay, two last topics. Yeah. Standardized I, I would, test and then homework. I have you, to you cut gotta it because I think my next meeting is waiting for me. I think that's what that call is. Okay, was. okay. So last, last, last. Tell me let's something. do one, one more. One more. Yeah. One more. It's busy, man. It's hard to get older. Uh, uh, standardized tests. They still exist right now in yeah. the system? Yeah. What are your thoughts on them? What's interesting about testing is, again, you go back to debates. There's there's huge debates over the weight that school districts put on, on testing. Mm. Um, we still use them, but we're trying to use them more holistically than in the past. Um, you get certain numbers, the CASP score, or there's youth truth surveys that, that look at more uh, attitudinal approaches toward, uh, toward education on the part of students and parents. There's a lot of different data points that we look at. Um, any one number on its own doesn't tell you that much. Uh, it can tell you, uh, tr it can show you trend lines for sure. Uh, it can give you a piece of the puzzle, but in and of itself, that testing doesn't tell you everything. Mm. And the caution that we always, uh, certainly that I always try to, to share with folks is it matters uh, on one level, but it's not the only thing that matters. Sure. And so there's, there's always going to be some degree of standardized testing. And the question is, do you educate to the test mm. or do you educate um, to make sure your kids are best prepared for the world that awaits them? Well said. And the testing is part of that, but it's, it, the, te the testing doesn't matter at all unless you also look at 
uh, other ways that the kids are learning. Yes. Uh, I think of some of our schools that take a less traditional approach toward education that rely less on those standardized testing and more on, say, project-based learning. Okay. Uh, and so it's a mix, and that's yeah. what's important. On one hand, people want to get rid of it. The other hand, my wife and mom and everybody says, well, I look at test scores before I decide if they should go to that yep. school. So yep. there's two sides to every story. Yes. Mr. Crosby's got to go. Um, thank you so much. You're welcome. Uh, sir, I promised you on that time. Can I have your, your word on the record? Have you on again? Oh, sure. We'll do this. Yeah, awesome. Sure. Awesome. Okay. I appreciate it. We're no Charles problem. Crosby, Evergreen School District. Uh, and, and last plug, the website, uh, parents, for more information, you can find it at? Uh, EES, EESD.org mm -hmm. uh, is the Clearinghouse site, and that'll also lead you to all of our school sites as well. Wonderful. Thank you so much, sir. You're welcome. Get to that meeting. Okay. I appreciate it. Looking better than me, man. Awesome. <laughs> all dressed. Thanks, guys. Cheers. Okay.